Alright guys, I'm Rabir. And I'm Matt. And this is Sound Like on Anderson's TV. It's oh been God. a while. It's been a while. It's been a long time. It's been the longest of times. We're sorry for the radio silence on the Sound Like episodes. Life just got in the way. Yes, it did. But <laughs> we're back. We are back. Yes. We are back. And today we are going to be trying in our greatest wisdom to sound like... Queens of the Stone Age. Yes, perfect. We've still got it. Yeah, we do. Um, I'm Queens excited. of the Stone Age this time by Busting the Bag. Yeah. It was one of our first videos. It was one of the very first. So Loved like it. About three years ago now. It, wow, so really? It's been a while. Wow, that's a long um, time. Let's have a tonal recap okay. right now. <laughs> Trying to sound like Josh Homme mm -hmm. and Troy Van Leeuwen, which we didn't do last time. We didn't, so doubling up this time: two guitars, two guitarists, two rigs, two no budget. Let's go, let's do it. All right. What is this EBS? They were developed because people got IBS from so much low frequency <laughs> that they thought they'd come out with their own brand, so they just had to change it a bit. Okay. I'm taking on the challenge of being Josh Homme this time, as I did last time, but this time without a budget and. We did a lot more trawling of the internet and they just, they change gear all the time. One thing that does seem to uh, be consistent with Josh Homme is semi-hollow semi guitars with humbuckers. Uh, sometimes filtertrons, but generally, uh, from what I've seen, is, is humbucker guitars. So, to be honest, it's going to be something in the realms of, and we don't have a budget, so we could go like mega Gretsch on it, or we could go like mega uh, like Gibson on it. So, I'm going to have a look in the hollow body section. That. It's great. It's not a semi-hollow, it's a solid body, so, I mean, we did a video on this yesterday with Robin Lee, but I don't think it's going to make a huge amount of difference, just really to sustain. But in terms of the pickups and the look, it's, it's there. It's very nice. Is it? Is that hollow? Yeah, it, it could be chambered, chambered. Yeah. yeah. It's quite a thick body. Yeah. This is a contender and it's two and a half thousand pounds, that, so... That's suitably busting budgets. I know it's not looks like it sound like, but it kind of has a vibe. It's beautiful. It is. Very beautiful. It was, uh, Matt was just having a look to try and find out a bit more about it because we haven't seen it in store before, but it was announced at NAMM. It's got Filtertron pickups in it. It's a pretty nice looking guitar, made in Japan. It's about the 2,200 mark as well, so it, it, it hits that requirement to bust the bank. It's a difficult decision, and if this was kind of more interactive, we'd ask you what you thought. Yeah, we would. But we need to make a decision. Yeah, but also, I just spotted this. Now, this is really busting the bank. £4,449 wow. for a Gibson ES335, and this is the Memphis, uh, and it's got one of these really cool... And actually, he owns a lot of guitars with this kind with of bridge set going on. The kind of trim. Yeah. Um, and it's humbuckers. I'm judging by Matt's enthusiasm towards this one that I might... That's giving me 335 envy. Veritone pot as well, which is going to change up the wiring, polarities, parallel series, all that kind of stuff. Ooh, I don't know. I reckon tonally this might do, do you the think? job. It's four and a half thousand pounds. I'm just going to say yeah. <laughs> Fine. Okay, my go. I am going to find a guitar for Troy Van Leeuwen. He has a signature Fender Jazzmaster which I don't think is available right now. So I'm going to have to go and find on the wall of Fender something, something close. So I need a jazz master, ideally with a rosewood board and with P90 pickups. This might just be that guitar. Okay, so this one here is £1,500. Rosewood board, P90 kind of style pickups here. Um, you know, it's a, it's a jazz master, pretty reminiscent to to Troy's SIG. I'm gonna go with this. Oh, nice. Amplifiers. We were just debating whether Josh is still using bass amps, as he was kind of famous for doing in the early days. I've seen there's an Ampeg VT122 combo that he used. Um, well, last time we used for Josh a, an orange tiny terror of all the things in the world. We did, but we didn't factor in cabs on that first video. No. Um, um, it doesn't matter now because this is by busting the exactly, bank. Exactly, so we have, we have complete freedom. So I'm thinking, 
It's a hard one to be honest, because I don't know how much of it we're going to do with pedals, but I know that there are some really key pedals for his tone, like the Mooga Fuga, fil yeah. um, the filter pedal, and we used the Green Rhino last time, which did us, get us very close, so I'm going to get that again, and but the, then there was... The, the Kaelin Bread SFT is, is something that which gets talked about a lot when talking about Josh Homme's sound. So, so I think, in terms of the amp, what's important to do is to find something that's a good pedal platform, but also has quite a powerful EQ section, yes. so that we can manipulate... Sculpt some tones. Exactly, so... It's kind of... I think I've got an easy call, to be honest, so let's, let's focus on, on Big Josh. I'm curious about going with the... Um, Victory V40 Deluxe because it has, has drive in it it's a single master amplifier so you can gun it um, it is a clean good pedal platform and it's got a decent EQ section and I think it could get us pretty close £1800 has it got it's quite simple in terms of because, we, because obviously you've got the Tone King stuff the Milkman stuff which are all good Friedman stuff's very good um, the Morgan is pure, clean, but it can do, it's really good for pedals. The reason that I still feel like maybe the V40 Deluxe would be good is because it's a very good cleanup, but as soon as you start pushing it, it starts to thicken up, and it's not a thin gain. It's a really well, thick saturation, which I think will help. And knowing it's good with pedals is just a good shout. Does, so, it, does it have a drive channel, or is it just No, pure, it's just it's single channel, so in, with a master, so you just will gun you the... need to attenuate it? Uh, well, we have the Universal Audio Ox box if we, we if we need to attenuate. Perfect. Um, I'm still sticking with it. Okay. So as a complete twist of fate, I found this, and this is the Double Cat by Duesenberg, and I think this is the closest we can find. It looks so Josh Homme. It's right a now. lot, lot cheaper. But we've also never used Duesenberg in anything. No, we haven't. Sixteen hundred pounds isn't exactly cheap. No, um, it's not. But it's a lot cheaper than four and a bit. Yeah, four and a half thousand pounds. But this, I think, is going to get us maybe closer. It looks closer, so I'm going with uh, <laughs> this. Is looks like on well, go with your TV. Gut. Go with your gut. <laughs> so we're doing pedals at this point. We need to choose the specific ones for each artist. And I'm thinking, I used the Green Rhino last time by Way Huge. Going to use that again. All here. They Good. they both actually use quite a lot of Way Huge stuff. Yeah, it works really really well. So I'm just I'm just going to use that. So we've just found this, which is the Stone Deaf PDF2, which apparently, I quote, is Josh Homme in a box. Yeah, because, and what's really interesting about this is, I actually did some videos for these guys ages ago, yeah. and the guy that designs them told me that he gave one to Josh Homme and he really, really liked it. Right. And it totally slipped my mind. Well, this is inserting it back into your mind. Yeah. I think this might be a good option. Well, we'll definitely If you throw do that, that and then there. I go Green Rhino. Okay. Because it, it, it. But I need a drive a pedal as well. And this is, although it's drive pedal, I want to get a little bit more out of it too. So basically, I'm going to use this. going to try and look for the Moog Fuga drive. And then a couple of different effects we'll see when we get to the video room. But yeah, that's basically me sorted. I'm going to go with the Dispatch Master because the ease is delaying reverb a little bit. Um, there is nothing in the amp, and he uses one of these. We should go and see how it sounds. Let's put it all together, mix it up, and see what it sounds like. <gasps> In the video room, we're back. We are back in the video room in this in this experiment, in this trial and tribulation. To do a job. Yes, basically, in short, we're trying to sound like Queens of the Stone Age. Yes, we are. By busting the bank. So but I'm going to just say that I was... Uh, we thought it was going to be simple. It wasn't simple. Ah, it was. Ah. <laughs> it wasn't simple. We got going, and it was like... Ah. I thought 
it was going to be really, really easy. Well, actually, we said on the train this morning on the way up, we were like, yeah, we'll start with something easy. It was the worst thing. It was like, the worst decision Honestly, ever. it was not easy Well, I mean, not the worst. We've had some pretty big challenges. Yeah, we have. But this one... There again, this classic case of like sound like syndrome, I'm going to call it, yeah. where basically they've been around for like 20 odd years. They've had numerous rigs, numerous sounds, numerous albums. And sound like it, syndrome, I like that. Sound, yeah, I'm going to, it's a new thing. Yeah. Let me get it on a t-shirt. And it's, where do you start? There's so much to choose from. So we had a challenge, but we picked some songs, didn't we? Yeah. Some of the more well-known ones. Ranged and, um, across a couple of albums. We did. So let's start away with the gear. I'm really chuffed with the sounds I've got. So firstly... We've got the Duesenberg Double Cat. This was a last minute grab for me. It was, a bit of a kind of a U-turn. And actually, for the price of the original guitar, this is about three times cheaper. Yeah, it's 1,600 quid for this. Yeah. And the I was gonna get a Gibson at 335 Memphis. For about four Like True Historic or something, it's like four, yeah, four and a half thousand. Beautiful but though. this is way closer to what, what Josh Homme would play, I think, in terms of well, I've just seen him play a lot of some black and white guitars. It's got the vibe. Kind of it's got the vibe. And it does. The amp I'm running is the Victory V40 Deluxe. It's a 1,300 pound, roughly 1,300 pound head. And then the cabinets are about 500. So it's, it's, it's chunky. Um, but it's a single channel, single master amplifier. So you can, if you wanted to have spanky clean by gunning the master and lowering the volume or vice versa, get a bit more dirt from it. So this is how the amplifier sounds because what I'm doing is I'm boosting the volume and I've lowered the master. So this is what I've got going in. It's worth saying as well, we're tuned to C standard and these are like tens. It's worth just a note on that, I'm not. Okay, I am though. <laughs> so it's only just managing to stay in tune. And um, I think it sounds really nice as it is. Yeah, it's yeah. thick. I made sure it was thick. The winner, winner chicken dinner of this sound like is the Stone Def, Stone Def PDF2. Because he uses the PDF1 and it, it was just a sure fire going to get us there. And so it has a clean and a dirty channel. We used a bit of both. I blended it with the MXR Sugar Drive. Which I've not heard before. No, but it does a great job. Yep. Let me show you the Sugar Drive on its own. Sugar Daddy. I like to do that. So it's providing, awesome. providing quite a lot of grunt. Yes. But the PDF2 on clean really only just boosts it a bit. So this is, this is without and then with. Really you can tiny hear it, bit. but it's, yeah, it's a little. Where it's really good though is the bandwidth knob because it's a, like a five-way um, sort of rotary knob and it can go between thin and fat. So I've got it all the way over to fat. I've lowered the frequency so it's kind of mushy uh, and the gain's, well, around halfway. And it's just got that. If I turn the dirty on. It's just immediately giving you the Josh Homme thing, isn't it? It's, yeah, immediately, straight away. And you want to go a bit more button. hardcore, throw in the sugar drive. You... That's great. It's just straight away, is in there. Yeah. And then I used the Walrus Luminary, uh, Luminary, used the Walrus Luminary for Little Sister. The oh, you did? I just turned it on for a bit of low-end support on the octave to do... It's so, so subtle. And then I used the Dispatch Master. Which I think should be called the Mismatch Pasta. <laughs> I used the Dispatch Master for the beginning of My God is the Sun. Great song. Uh, literally for the intro where it sort of rolls in. His is definitely more of a spring reverb thing that's rolled up right the way, but 
to be fair. I've got a bit of spring reverb in on the V40 as well. And that is my rig in its entirety. I'm very happy with it. It's a, it's a, good, it's a good old I've, shout. I've busted the bank. Definitely. I mean, That's we're talking two, two you're probably, three and a half. Yeah. So nearly 4K worth of guitar effects and guitar amps and rigs. It's, it's, it's chonky. <laughs> Right, that brings us nicely onto my rig, which is started with, here with this Fender American Professional Jazzmaster. It all starts with an American Professional. It all starts with an American Professional. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Lovely guitar. Um, Rosewood fretboard was the thing I was looking for, and kind of P90s, um, which I got. Um, it's, yeah, lovely guitar. I will say it was struggling a little bit with... I mean, C this probably standard. has nines on it, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and trying to tune down all the way to C standard was proven a bit difficult. So I actually played in drop D, it was D standard drop, drop C. Yeah, yeah, D standard drop to C. Um, so not quite there, but if you if you chuck some fat strings on it, you'd be fine. Um, that is running obviously through the pedals into this, which is the Morgan AC40 Deluxe. Great amp. This was a change from what I decided in the store, which was the Vox AC15 hand-wired amp. Really, really nice amp. However, it's super clean unless you crank it, then it blows your head off. So we tried to attenuate it. Unfortunately, the, the little cable at the back from the speaker is about this long. So unless the attenuator was kind of hanging off the back, it wasn't gonna work. Anyway, so change to this Morgan, which you know I didn't really have to think about budget too much, so Yes, it blows it out of the water. Do you know, I have one thing that I want to say, though, that I just wish that the light, the cabinet... The cab uh, light lit up as well. Yeah. That would be nice. Because it looks it? so nice in the head, but you just want to see it on the cab, too. Yeah. And you don't get to. But, you know, that's just me. You could put a little orange sticker on it to you give could. you the illusion. <laughs> Okay, uh, that runs basically, I had a few pedals kind of taken apart in the dark. I know he uses a lot of way huge stuff. So I actually had, I've got the swollen pickle here, which I didn't use in the end. The Russian pickle I also didn't use. And I stuck with the green rhino, interestingly. Which we used in the very first which time. Which we used for Josh Homme without all, those, all that time ago. So that kind of did me, did me proud really. Mm. Um, I had a little bit of reverb coming from the, the, the dispatch master, um, by Earthquaker. A load of the, a load of the stuff we read, uh, Troy uses, I found about like 70 delays and 50 yeah. reverbs. Um, lots and lots of pedals. Yeah, so basically this, this covered that off. Didn't use any delay for these excerpts. And then the SP boost, or sorry, EP boost, um, I used just for some of the swells, I think, to give it a lift. It was getting a bit noisy, so I didn't use it most of the time. But yeah, I will show So literally, you. the Green Rhino and the Dispatch Master made the cut along with the amp and guitar. That's, That's correct, cool. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> So this is what it sounds like into the amp. So yeah, really, really nice. I love the way that lower tuned guitars, for me, just sound nicer than normal tuned guitars. They do, they do. And it's like we said before, why don't these baritones or, you know, a longer scale? With C standard, you could get away with a baritone. Yeah, C standard is long. Anyway, I'm, yeah, I'm in D standard right now, but yeah. <laughs> With the Green Rhino, this is, again, like I used it, I twiddle with these little knobs here quite a lot, um, which is fun. Um, 
But this is what it sounds like. <laughs> So yeah, that's, that's pretty. That's pretty pokey. Yeah, I think that, that was the setting pokey. I actually had for some swells yeah. rather than the uh, the riff setting. So let's just like yeah, I think we maxed it out. Let's chill we? it out a little yeah. bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Green Rhino is a great pedal, and it did a great job. But as I say, literally between each excerpt, we kind of we play a song then find the next sound, yeah. then play it in, and then find the next sound. So yeah. referencing back what I did is hard work. But you know what's interesting is I had to do that a lot less. Yeah. I think because Josh Homme just, except on the new record, it sounded like tones have been quite consistent throughout the albums. Yeah, the, we, we, we checked out the way, the way you used to, I yeah. think it was called. Um, I didn't have the ability. I, I could totally achieve that sound, the really, really high, plinky, yeah. plinky first sound. I couldn't. Yeah, you the can, whole rig's too dark. Yeah, yeah. So this is probably like for Josh Homme, a bit more of an old schooler yeah. um, in terms of his sound. But... I really like this rig. Yeah, like... I'm I'm a fan of this to be honest. Straight into the amp and, and the guitar sounds like super warm, super super big, um, and yeah, it's with Troy. It seems like a lot of textures and really really high pitched. Um, like please, the articulate stuff. one. That's it. That's it. And thus concludes our attempt to sound like Queens of the Stone Age with. Uh, non-existent budget. Yes, we blew it out of the water. So as always, all of the links to all of the gear is in the description box below. Yes, let us know what you think and we will try and achieve, well not achieve, we will try and answer your requests in future Sound Like videos when yes. we get a chance to come back and film more. Yes, we will. And if you haven't checked out Queens of Stone Age before, that's something you should do too, because they are great. Yes. And if you haven't checked out old Queens of Stone Age, do that too. And if you didn't know, I've been Rabir. And I've been Matt. And if you didn't know, this has been Anton's TV. And this has been Sounds Like on said channel. Yeah. See you later. Bye. <laughs> uh. <laughs> we should do that with buckles. Hey everybody, thanks for watching the Anderton's Guitar YouTube channel. If you're a drummer or a keyboard player or interested in music technology, you might find one of our other channels interesting and I'll put details of those in the description below. If you want to find out more about the products we've just featured, please click here. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt like this, please click here. If you want to watch another video on our guitar channel, click down here. And to subscribe to our guitar channel, click here. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.